Did you know that it is likely that you're literally damaging your brain and you have no idea about it? Well, not damaging in the sense that you may think, but damaging in the sense of artificial means of releasing a hormone called dopamine. You see, dopamine is a hormone that is released by your brain whenever your brain experiences pleasure or achievement. But here's the thing, when you experience pleasure or achievement through artificial means, your brain still releases those hormones, but it's an artificial means and that is very toxic because number one, they only give you temporary pleasure. And number two, those means end up desensitizing your dopamine receptors in your brain to not be able to feel any pleasure or reward from things that actually are rewarding and should be pleasurable. You see, we live in a day and age now where it's so easy to just buy anything from the tip of our own fingers, literally online, or we look online to see who liked our photos on Instagram, or we look online to watch porn, and also there's Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max. The problem with all of this is over time, it causes over stimulation through the artificial release of dopamine. When we artificially release dopamine because we get a temporary high off of that screen right there, and then a temporary high off of checking our phone, and then a temporary high off of scrolling through Instagram and seeing that, that hottest girl or whatever. When that accumulates over time, our dopamine receptors become desensitized and we become unable to actually experience reward or pleasure through doing the things that are actually supposed to give us reward or pleasure, like lifting weight, reading a book, genuinely connecting with someone. You see, back in the day, there was no such thing as high-speed internet. There was no such thing as porn. There was no such thing as Instagram and social media. And because of those things, overstimulation was not a thing from way back in the days. To experience pleasure or reward, you had to literally go out there and do something. You had to work out, which actually till the end of time, you're gonna have to work out if you wanna gain muscles. You can't artificially gain muscles. You're gonna have to do that in order to gain that feeling of pleasure or reward. But to connect with people, instead of pointlessly scrolling through your phone, through people who most likely you don't even click with in real life, back then you're gonna have to go out and meet them and genuinely connect with someone. Instead of swiping on your phone through these dating apps, the way to actually get that feel good hormone is connecting with a woman genuinely, maybe through a social circle, maybe through an event, you meet her. Those things end up giving you healthy dopamine because you deserved it. It's like your brain is rewarding you. You worked out, you deserved it because number one, you worked out and you conquered resistance. And number two, your body is exercising. So it's giving you dopamine for two reasons. But now when you're overstimulated with all these things, sure your brain releases dopamine, but it's temporary. Not only is it temporary, but it gets desensitized because you're unable to experience the pleasure at its full effect. Speaking of porn, do you have any idea that regular porn users often experience anxiety, depression, and general emptiness and social withdrawal due to their consumption of porn over time? I bet you didn't because here's why. When you're sitting there on your computer or your phone and you're watching porn websites like Pornhub, for example, and you have like five tabs open and each tab has a different type of content, sure, each of them is giving you a temporary high, but because of this overstimulation, you're unable to even focus on one of them. It's like you're getting temporary pleasure, temporary pleasure, temporary pleasure, temporary pleasure, temporary pleasure through each one of those tabs, but none of them is giving you true fulfillment. You're not really experiencing real pleasure from any of them. And then after binge watching all this porn, after the end of it, sure, you feel a very tiny sense of pleasure, but immediately after it, you feel like total trash. You feel like garbage after it because you feel empty inside. You don't feel like you actually experienced pleasure or you don't feel like you've actually achieved anything. You see, what these websites do to you is they overstimulate you and they desensitize your dopamine receptors. And this is nothing like actually experiencing a genuine connection with a woman and having an actual sexual encounter with a woman you genuinely connect with. That is completely different. That would actually give you genuine pleasure because you feel a connection with this person and your brain is rewarding you for that. And you're not going to feel empty inside after an experience like that. But after consuming porn, especially large amounts of it, and all at the same time, each of them are giving you pleasure for literally seconds and you can't even focus on one tab at a time due to overstimulation, that eventually can give you those symptoms. Social withdrawal, anxiety. It could even give you sexual dysfunction. A lot of men have reported that, even younger men. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you just stayed home and you binge watched Netflix, Hulu, or something like HBO Max shows just for an entire day? And at the time of you watching your shows, it felt good partially, but by the end of the day, you felt like absolute garbage. You felt empty. I bet you that day wasn't too long ago. Why? Due to the ease of accessibility, of these types of apps and this type of content and also because of, again, overstimulation. You open up your smart TV and here you are, you see all these apps and there's this trailer, there's this trailer, there's this movie that's newly added to Netflix. Your brain is unable to focus on all of those and it becomes overstimulated. And then you watch all these shows and by the end of the day, you feel like absolute trash. You feel unproductive. I bet you you had one of those days not too long ago. Actually, you most likely had one of those days not too long ago and you kind of even felt guilty towards your own self and because of that, you
you felt like the next day when you started, it carried over to your next day. So the next day you felt like trash again. And it's very likely that this cycle repeats itself many days for a lot of people. It could lead you down a negative path. Some of the signs of you being on that dark path could be again, social withdrawal, anxiety, a lack of ability to focus. That's a huge one. We can't focus nowadays as much as people from let's say 40 years ago because they didn't have this type of overstimulation. Dopamine reward wasn't that simple. It wasn't at the click of their hands, from the tip of their fingers, literally. And let me tell you this, I'm not gonna lie. I deal with the negative effects of overstimulation myself. Whenever, let's say I'm in a social gathering and I feel like I can't really connect with others there, even though I usually can, when I get that feeling and I kind of feel isolated and I kind of get the vibe that there's clicky vibes where people are just super, you know, connected with only who the people they know and they kind of leave outsiders to themselves. When I'm in those types of environments, I don't feel happy and I feel bored. And because I feel bored, I look at my phone and I check Instagram and stuff like that just for the artificial means of releasing the dopamine. I'll admit it, I'm not gonna lie. But the difference is I don't do this all day. I don't check my phone all day only. Sure, that artificial means of releasing dopamine is not good on the long run and it's not good if you do it too much, but I'll admit it, I do it sometimes. However, most of the times I'm trying to do something productive. I'm trying to go to the gym, I'm reading, I'm working on the next video, I'm thinking of ideas about the next video, I have a coaching call with a client. And even for watching Netflix, I rarely watch Netflix. Maybe once in a while when I'm like overworked from making too many videos or from overworked from work in general and I'll just unwind for like an hour or two watching Netflix because I'm so burnt out. Sure, that's okay, that's normal. It could actually be healthy in that case. That's not what I do on a normal basis. And also speaking of porn, let me admit something myself too. I quit watching porn way back in 2017. I stopped watching porn because I realized that it wasn't leading me towards where I wanted to. It just was not productive. It wasn't making me feel productive. Every time I'd watch porn, sure, it'd feel good for a very temporary moment, but after that, I was just feeling empty inside. I was not feeling productive. I wasn't feeling like I actually achieved anything. As a matter of fact, it kind of felt like I was ashamed of myself afterwards. After doing it, I felt empty. I was asking myself, what the hell did you just do? Here you were for an hour or two watching this content and it benefited you no way whatsoever. And thankfully at the time, I came across a website slash group of people, it's called NoFap, where it's basically a community of men who each tell their success stories of how they quit porn and also at the same time, they encourage other men to do the same thing. And I really recommend you follow that group. It's called NoFap. I'll probably link it in the description below. You see, when you follow groups like these of similar men encouraging positive behavior, and needless to say, ever since I followed that group back in 2017, I haven't been watching porn ever since. And I'm very proud of myself for doing that because it's a very toxic habit. And a lot of young men deal with this, not just young men actually, older men too. And it desensitizes your dopamine system, which can literally lead you to things that you have absolutely no clue about. It could even lead to erectile dysfunction for some men because it desensitizes your dopamine receptors in your brain and you're unable to fully experience a connection with a woman that's genuine. Instead, you're looking at your screen. You're not even looking at a real person. So that sense of pleasure is artificial. It's not real. Another huge downside of overstimulation is that it doesn't allow you to focus on only one thing at once. As a matter of fact, that might be its worst downside. Why? Because here you are watching Netflix at home so you're getting that temporary relief from that smart TV you have at home and also that temporary relief through the artificial release of dopamine whenever your phone vibrates because you want to see who liked your picture or you want to see who texted you so you're scrolling through your phone and you're watching the TV at the same time that's too much overstimulation and that's literally hijacking your brain and you're unable to focus at one thing at once which I mentioned a couple of videos ago is the key to success focus instead of being distracted by a million things at once you should focus only on one thing at once overstimulation does not allow you to do that it keeps you enslaved to all of those things that give you the temporary pleasure through the artificial dopamine release. And you wonder why you can't focus. And you wonder why you're not productive. And you wonder why you're not successful. Think about that.